So today we're starting a new unit. We're we'll talking about transformations, just basically talking about movements, uh, like describing movement of objects or movements of points using geometry to solve points. So how, how you describe how something is moving across something like uh, going from one location to another. So I'm going to start it off. I'm going to show you guys an example of this Pac Man. You guys see that okay? Should I turn off the light? Yeah, I'll turn off the light to see where. So, as you watch this, everyone played this Pac Man before? With most of you? Or Pac Man? Same thing, kind of. So, as you watch this, I want you guys to. Notice how Pac, uh, this Pac-Man is moving and see if you can kind of describe her motion to me. <laughs> right. Very slow. Yeah, it was very slow. The beginners. <laughs> so, what else do you tell me about the motion? Huh? What can you say about the motion of the back man? How was she moving? Where was she moving? Yeah, it's all in the rules of the game, but how would you? You describe someone who <clears throat> never played Pac Man before, or do you say like they have a joystick, or are they supposed to do something with it? <laughs> yeah. What, what do we do? Well, how is she moving? Where is she moving? Is there any word to it? Almost like a stick. You almost get a switch on the car. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> First, second, third, <laughs> fourth, yeah. Did you say she would move it? She moved to the right first. You say that maybe? And did she move? Did she move up a little bit? Yeah, she kind of moved. In. When we talk about that kind of movement, just saying like left, right, up, down, we're talking about what's called a translation. So if we're just dealing with translations, uh, this next video will show you how Ms. Pac-Man moves using only translations. She flips around again. So, when we're talking about like doing these little flips, we're talking about reflections. So, that'll be what we're going over tomorrow. It'll be how to describe reflections. <laughs> so, if we add that into the mix, we add the flip, the reflections, we'll see how our movement changes. So there she flipped. So it looks a little better, but it's still not quite right, huh? What are we missing? Why does it not look right? 
Well, yeah, that's a good point. She's apparently not hungry anymore. Yes, I'll say, Jordan. And uh, let's go and up. She wasn't turning around to go up. You know, so whenever she was changing directions, she flipped, but she wouldn't necessarily rotate. She wouldn't turn around, so we call that a rotation. Something we'll be talking about more on Thursday. So we have translations, reflections, and rotation. So we add in a rotation, it should look a little more normal. Let's see what happens when you add in rotations. When she goes there, she rotates, she rotates, rotate, flip, rotate. So apparently she's still not hungry, but she's following the path a little bit better now, right? So we're describing motion of things, movement. It's not good enough to say, oh, we went up and to the right. There's going to be more to it. Uh, we're kind of going to be spacing this out into segments, like describing each type of movement. But then it's not good enough to say what type of movement it is. Like, uh, I'll describe it like how far did she go? Like if you're just describe more so of what she was moving, what would you maybe say? She moved what? She just she moved up, uh is that very specific? What could you say maybe? Or what do we need to know? Are so quiet. <laughs> so it might help to throw in some units, maybe. Like, if you think about like how far is moving, like you might want to use like say she ate ten dots, but what does ten dots really mean? So it's can you have some kind of a reference, like a coordinate plane? Uh, if you ever watched, I don't know if you've seen what the developer screen looks like on like video games, they'll actually have stuff gridded out so they can actually like mark out this the space is used for that. So in geometry, we're going to be using the coordinate plane a lot to help us actually describe more specifically what what's being moved. So if we like overlay a coordinate plane onto the Miss Pac-Man game. We can more easily say, like, she moved this many spaces to the right. She's moving this many spaces forward. She flipped along in this kind of line. So it gives us more precise definition of her movements. Okay. So that help us transition to what we're doing today. Got a little video for you guys to watch. <coughs> Thank you. 
that's, that kind of gives us an introduction of what we're doing. Everyone remember to grab a note packet on their way in. Okay. So based off what we've gone over so far today, a one-dimensional geometric figure is a change in the position, size, or shape of the figure. Well, what are we talking about today? This whole unit? More broad than just translations. Yeah. That's a, today's topic, it'll be a bit more broadly what we're we talking about. Let's say the unit was called transformation. So, transformation geometric figure is it changes position, size, and shape. Okay, so then in a transformation, the original figure is going to be called the pre image. And then the resulting figure, after we've done some transformation to it, we're going to call that the image. And then talk about that in the video. Remember, we said for transformation, which the image and image are congruent. Remember that word? Yeah, it's sort of the uh, isometry. Isometry is where the free image and image are congruent. So it might change its orientation, but its overall size and shape stays the same. And for notation, we look, we're talking about, we start with our pre-image, we go to the image, we use this arrow to notate that we're going from one thing to another thing, so something's being done to it, and we uh, put that arrow in the words, we say maps onto, we do maps onto, and the arrow means we're changing from one shape to a new shape, or a new location. And we add primes to each of the letters to notate that we have an image. You can keep going. You can keep this going if you want and do another one. So let's say we translated four units to the right. And, we want, and now we want to go translated five units more to the right or something. You can keep going and you can just add more primes to it. So you say it maps on to J double prime, K double prime, Q double prime. And you just keep on going, adding more primes as you go along. So later on, next week, we're going to talk about composition. We're going to get to that a lot more, but where you're going to be doing multiple steps. But just thinking about isometries, things are the figures are going to be congruent. Uh, in this one, the pre-image, so our starting figures are the shaded one, and the unshaded one is going to be our image. So on that first one on the left, is that going to be an isometry or no? Yes. Yes. Why? Yeah, nothing changed. The figures are still congruent. Oh, it's right there. Congruent for now with the equal sign of that little silver thing over it means congruent. How about the second one? No, why would you know? Don't look the same one else. Oh, be, it's not real specific. They're not the same size. Kind of the same size. Let me see, sure. Not the same shape. I mean, the, whole, the whole thing kind of got pushed sideways, so it kind of formed a new shape. It's like going from a rectangle to a parallelogram that got pushed over some. I'm going to say, I'm going to say no, I'm going to say it's not the same shape. How about the 
one on the far right. Uh, isometry. Huh? No, actually, it's about it's the same size. Yeah, there could be two transformations that you could reflect and then translate it. Can you have silky isometry? As long as the size and shape didn't change, yes. And yeah. See, this is kind of like a reflection. It looked like it reflected along the line and then kind of rotated around. But when you look at it, the size and shape overall is still the same. So, yes, there's still congruence here. They moved a little bit, but they're still congruent. Let us say they are congruent. Make it easy. So then, like about specific types of transformations, which one maps all points of vigor the same distance, the same direction? So which one means sliding that object over? No translation. So this would be the translation. Translation numbers is basically a slide. There would have been so many. They're going up, down, left, right, something like that. I mean, all this here, the pink triangles being mapped onto the blue triangle. So each each dot is being moved the same uh, <coughs> basis in the same direction. So what do you notice about those lines showing the mappings? <laughs> So these are the same lengths for one thing. What else do you know about though? What was that? They connect the two points. How about the those lines compared to the other line? Kind of relationship there. Parallel, yeah. So it's always going to be a parallel move. So we're just talking about translation. When you're moving each vertice over, they should, be, if you want to draw a mapping onto it, all your lines are always going to be parallel. So it's all moving in the same direction. And they're all moving in the same amount of spaces. So let's start doing an example problem here. So it says find the image of a triangle ABC under the translation. And this is how we write translations x, y is mapped onto x plus 6, y minus 3. Uh, when we're talking about x and y, so what, what direction is x is? Left, right, and that's a positive move. Is that going to be right or left? Right. Okay, then we're talking about y is this up and down. Is this a negative y, is that going to be up or is that going to be down? Down. So, it means we're moving the triangle right six units and down three units. And it tells us the points of the triangle originally, so we'll write those down. So we got a point at negative three, one, so three left, one up. Label that A. I got a point at negative four, three, four left, three up. Label that one B. I got a point at negative two, four, two left, four up. I'll label that point C. And it tells us this is a triangle, so I'm going to connect the point to make a triangle out of this. Alright. So then our goal is to make a new triangle. They say the easiest way to go about this is just think of mapping. So I'll map the A as negative 3, 1. So to do that, I need to basically add 6 units to that and subtract 3 units to that. 
So if I want to map A to A prime, A prime is going to be what? Negative 3 plus 6. 3. And 1 minus 3. Here, 2. I keep going for the other one. So B prime is going to be negative 4 plus 6. And it's going to be with my y is 3. And I'm subtracting 3. So B prime is what? Two zero and C prime we're going negative two and we're adding six and we're going four and we're subtracting three. So C prime is what? Four one. Okay, so let's Plot those three new points. We got A prime at three, negative two. Label that as A prime. B prime's at two, zero. Label that B prime and a four, one. Label that C prime and connect dots. So then if I was to ask you, what is this figure called, what do you say? Pre-image and this one is the image and we look at it, all our points. They all have shifted, the lines are parallel each other, those lines should be the same size. So all we did was slide it down to the right. So a couple more problems. This one, we're just talking about a point. So it doesn't, sometimes we're talking about shapes like that last one is a triangle. It could also be segments or it could be just a point even. So if we're going to say a translation of 8 negative 12 maps to 0, 14. I want to rule describe this translation. So what happens to go from 8 they have 12 to 0, 14. What directions would you look? Go to the right and also, also moving up. So, how should I write this? If I want to say we're moving, so we said we're moving right. Moving right, how many units? Eight units and we're moving up. How many units? How are we moving right? Huh? How are we moving right? Yeah. Up, so we're moving left. Yeah. Eight to zero is moving left. Good. Yeah. So left three units and we went up. How many units? Twenty-six units. And writing a rule, I want to say x y maps onto some points. I want to express that left three up twenty-six. I want to express that. I write x minus yeah, exactly. X minus eight, Y plus 26. That would be my rule. Is that a three or eight? You said you left three units. I don't know if you said that. It's supposed to be an eight there. I think I just can't write. <laughs> oh, my poor picture. Yeah, then the next problem is saying the coordinate of the image of the point is 2 negative 5 for the translation rule x, y maps to 
x minus 2 y plus 5 by the part of the pre image. Dimensions of what? The result. So we're looking for the pre image. So we're looking to see what happens before the translation. So how are we going to figure out what happened before the translation, wherever we were at? Subtract 2 add 5 to our point, that's it. But wouldn't that just be another translation from where our image is already? We're looking to go backwards in this case. Yeah, you're going to do the opposite. So we want to know where our image was before you translated it. So in this case, we're going to say 2 plus 2. Uh, we're going to say our y was negative 5. We want to go minus 5 because we want to go backwards to find the pre image. So we we'll say our pre image was the. Or negative 10. That's really all you really need to do for that one. They're just asking you, well, where did you start from? All we have to do is think about how we go backwards. Okay, last one. So they're giving us two triangles. Uh, MLN is the one. Three image of the M prime, N prime, L prime. It's the image. And we want to write a rule to describe so this describes the translation. So how are we going to find the rule? What are you looking at? How do you find the rule that describes this motion? We could do that. We could find the coordinates of each one and subtract it. Yeah. In this case, we have a nice graph with a nice coordinate point. We can just pick a point. So if I start with M, I'm just I'm looking to go to where? M prime. So how are we moving? We're going up one, two, and we're going right one, two, three, four, five, six units. So just to describe in words, I'll say we went up two, and I'll say we went right six. That should be the same for each one, right? So I go up one, two, and right, one, two, three, four, five, six, we end up at n prime. So that works. But a rule, I want to say x, y is mapping to what? X plus six. Yeah, x plus six as we move it right, and y plus two as we move it up. And that would be. It's on that one. Any questions? Alright, so I have this problem here. Not too bad, right? Yeah. What? Yeah. I have a heavy cross off one problem though. Uh, I mean, if you look on the back side of this page, I want you guys to cross off number five. Don't do number five.
Um, and this one, you're only doing A for number seven, so don't worry about doing this any more than the single prime for A, B, and C. And then also number 21 on the other side. Looking at this chessboard, we're actually describing two motions. We move into this spot. So right a rule go to that spot. That's right from that spot, right another rule going to your final spot. It's two different moves. So in this one I gotta have something that says you put someone like this XY maps to something, and then that maps to something else. Make sense? And for number one, just remember again, what's my song tree again? Good group figures. So make sure that the smiley never changes its shape or size. Yeah, so it can be upside down, but as long as it's still the same shape and size, it's still an isometry. So there's ones that are an isometry in there, there's ones that aren't. So I'll figure out which ones are. 